Alabama Dabbler here. Today I'm going to show you all how to do a dust collector. How I did it, anyways. I saw a couple videos online doing it with a five gallon bucket, right? The Home Depot buckets. So you don't mess up your filter on your vacuum and fill it up constantly. Well, I done it and it worked pretty good. Except for it doesn't hold very much, you know. And when you're playing in something and a lot of sawdust and uh, wood chips are coming off, this five gallon bucket gets full before you know it. And if you don't realize it, it gets sucked into your vacuum cleaner and your filter is all messed up and clogged up and your vacuum cleaner is slammed full. Well, I got tired of changing it out all the time. So I swapped over to a 55 gallon drum if you got room for it. Now I just did this yesterday and tested it and it works great. Uh, as you can see I don't have a lot of room in here with all this stuff. This table of course has got all my saws in it. If you look underneath it they're all folded down and stuff. These tops come off. Each individual top comes off and you can fold up each individual piece like your joiner over there's a, a, a sander in the corner. Then I got a, a router, miter saw, table saw, planer. Planer's right there. And a drill press. Of course, I put it on the floor when I don't need it. And uh, got my vacuum running up over here. I nabbed that from a car wash. <laughs> don't tell nobody. And then, of course, on the walls, I got all my different jigs and stuff I made for circles, picture frames, all kinds of different things. And to make joints and stuff for boxes. But it doesn't matter. You don't need to see all that. Anyways, and if you want to make just a five gallon one, I'm not going to go into building one, but I tell you, it's very easy. What you need to do is you take two buckets. You see that lip right there? You're going to have to take that lip off of one of your buckets, that lip right there, and take it off your other bucket. I just took an, uh, um, a, a razor knife and trimmed it off. You see how that's gone? Just the edge, uh, just the tip of it, that, that thick thing right there. You have to take that off. But if you look, you can get in behind it right there with a razor knife. And you, what you could do is if you've got like a propane torch, heat up your razor knife a little bit every time and just slide it down through there. But once you get it in there and cut it real slow, you, it's pr pretty easy. And then take some sandpaper and sand it a little bit and maybe put a little, a little chamfer on it, like a little beveled edge on it. So it'll pop into the, your other bucket which is going to be like this upside down and you just force it in and it locks in that's it now I'll show you the top of it go ahead and pop it off hold on Ugh. just slap it in the damn face okay popped it off here's the inside you got one turning towards the wall and one dead center. That's not ideal, but considering that little that little space, it's the only way I could do it. And here's the top. Here's the intake. That's where I put my vacuum cleaner hose. This is my well, that's exhaust really if it's a vacuum cleaner hose. That's the vacuum cleaner hose, and this is your hose running to your equipment. And what I used was a two inch PVC pipe there you go two inch PVC pipe I drilled a hole two inches in uh, with a hole saw here and there two inches then I cut me a piece about that long no specific measurement but make it a little bit longer than normal then you put it into your two-inch hole. I used um, 
hot glue gun and sealed it in there leaving a little sticking out enough for your PVC uh, 40 uh, 90 degree angle I even uh, used a hot wax gun to seal this too onto the pipe so it would be like that I'll show you 90 then another little piece of this I don't know what size pipe you have for your uh, your vacuum and your hose but I need a two inch so I cut a little piece of two inch there and then I added another small one and a half and if it's too loose just wrap some tape around it and force it in there and it'll come out if I need to and my hose goes there and my vacuum goes there that's a coupling for a two inch and the best way to do it is when you got this 90 and that 90 here is make it this here short enough to where them two 90s are touching your bucket if you know what I'm saying when you press them together that's how short you want this that way it's nice and tight and I put this extra little piece of wood on here and screwed it into the bucket so this doesn't you know move around too much because this is just some cheap plastic that's just about as simple as it gets and um, like I said it doesn't hold shit not much anyways if you have just dust sand dust and stuff like that it's fine but if you got like wood chips from your from your router or your planer mainly your planer and your router they they throw off a lot of wood chips anyways um, that's it for that piece of shit in my opinion if you have any concerns about if it's going to hold enough or not, don't even use this. This was just a build to see if it works. I've used it a couple weeks, but I got tired of dumping that damn bucket. I mean, it's a pain in the ass. And don't try to get slick. Don't try to get slick and uh, use one of these. These cardboard things I tried that too as you can see there's sawdust in it this is the this is where I dump my five gallon bucket of sawdust as you can see there's sawdust all in it it's got a plastic liner in it and a locking a locking lid do not use this because if you have a vacuum cleaner any size vacuum cleaner it will suck them sides in and it'll collapse trial and error don't make that error you won't have to try it it will suck the hell out of it I even tried to put some braces in there you know <laughs> to try to stop it from collapsing and it still fucking collapsed so let's not do that now let's get over here to the final now you might be thinking this is heavy you know but it's all those things real heavy and uh, I'm gonna put this on wheels so I can roll it out the back door but here we are now we got a, uh, this is to the equipment, just plain and simple. This here has not even got a coupling on it or nothing. It's just glued in there with the hot wax glue gun, two inch pipe, one and a half, with a little bit of tape to make it a little tighter, and uh, two inch hole, and it's also got a two inch pipe in it. Now what I did with this two inch pipe here, that's over here what I did was I heated that pipe up with a hot air gun as I was doing it and it because that these barrels that big screw hole is almost two inches in diameter so that two inch pipe almost fits in there so I thought well hell if I heat up the the PVC pipe the two inch PVC pipe I can kind of turn it and force it in there and that's exactly what I did and it worked pretty good just don't heat it up with a torch or something burn a hole in your PVC you don't want to heat it up too much a, a, a hot air gun or a blow dryer may even do it on high but that's how I did that with this uh, two inch that's inside here and I went all the way down and I marked it for the coupling the height cut it off put this 45 on there and it's all got um, the glue gun, hot, hot wax glue gun 
It's all put together with that. Just in case I ever have to take this apart. Like if you use um, PVC glue, you'll never be able to get them apart again. That glue is hell. So I, that's why I'm using the hot wax gun. The hot glue gun. Because I can heat that up with a blow dryer or something and take it pipes apart if I have to. If anything breaks or anything. But if you look, this is sturdy. This is really sturdy. And this is the vacuum cleaner we're working with. It's a 325 horsepower, 16 gallon. When I was using those little buckets, and all of a sudden I didn't have no, hardly no air no more. So I dumped the bucket, and this happened multiple times. And went back to work, but I always realized, man, that damn thing ain't sucking right. Well, I opened this up, and it was packed all the way to the filter. I mean, I'm lucky I didn't burn it up. But this old Sears vacuum cleaner, this thing sucks good. I got another one, the yellow one from Home Depot, the big one. That It's out in my shed. That thing ain't got shit on this old one. And uh, like I said, it goes into here. And it's plugged up in there into... It's just slid in there, a little bit of tape to keep it tight. And, uh, oh yeah, by the way, if you get a 15, 55 gallon drum, I had this left over from where I used to work. I had a couple of them. Make sure that you get one that has a removable lid. Don't forget that. These things are used are really inexpensive. I've seen them the other day for like $20 a piece. Twenty, thirty dollars with uh with the rings and everything to, to tighten it down but be honest with you this thing ain't even tightened uh, tightened up because it's once it sucks it pulls that lid down pull the ring off and i'll show you to just to remember the hardest part is drilling the damn holes man two inch hole two inch hole there's already a two inch hole, almost a two inch hole there glue it in here you got got it glued there onto the two inch pipe under the two inch pipe this is a 45 because I didn't have no more 90s this is a 90 now when you do this make sure they're going in opposite directions that way it flows like this it's coming in like this and and going down the barrel don't have them facing each other because then it'll come in and go straight into your shop vac. I mean, into your vacuum cleaner. Okay, have them going in opposite, di in the same direction. Your your holes. You can even put another piece on here and make it aim downward, but that's that's overkill. Just make sure that they're 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 going in the same direction. And not like turned around and going in against each other because then it just blow in come flying in and go straight into your to your shop bag and that's about it I'm gonna put this bad boy on wheels or like I said I'm gonna figure out a way to put some a, pla a plastic bag in it we got these big blue plastic bags that, bags that work and they'll be perfect for this and uh, okay, got it hooked back up, slid it back together. Now I'm gonna turn this thing on. I'm sorry it's gonna get a little loud, you know, because that shop vac ain't quiet. But if you watch, and I'm gonna try to see if you can hear it, it works so good that it sucks the lid down. And when you turn it off, it pops back out. Like I said, this ain't this ring ain't even tightened up. You can get them with like these little levers that lock them down. That's even better. But this is an old drum that's been sitting outside, and the gasket ain't ain't even that good anymore. But once this bad boy kicks in, it pulls it tight. I probably don't even need that ring, but I put it on there anyways. Now check this out. I got this on Amazon. It's a three-way plug. And uh, that's what I got my vacuum cleaner hooked up to. And it plugs into your normal outlet. And it comes with a remote. Because a lot of people have their shop vac and they have to run back and forth. Or their, their unit 
their vacuum unit and they have to con and they're on the other side of the room or something and they want to turn it off and on they have to walk over there and hit the switch well that thing's up there and the switch is on the back side so guess what <laughs> That's right, Alabama Dabbler, he lazy, and he's fat too, so, okay, watch this. popping that loud pop that was that was the damn thing sucking that lid tight that's how good that's how good it sucks I mean it doesn't play that's the way to go so if you're thinking on making a dust dust collector don't go buy no big expensive shit if you have any kind of if you're a little bit of mechanically inclined well, hell, if you're doing this, you you already know you're obviously working with wood and stuff and know how to cut shit. So, cutting the, if you don't have a two-inch hole saw, then you have to go buy a two-inch hole saw and get a barrel. I don't know what a two-inch hole saw costs. I got a couple of the other ones. I got it as a kit. That's the hardest part. I use my drill press, as you can see. There's still that two-inch, two-inch, uh, hole saw still in there matter of fact it's a little bit tighter than two inches so that that pipe fits in there really snug but uh that's all there is to it and eventually i'm going to figure that out with the bag and maybe before i post this video i'll have that figured out and show you how to put a bag in there and line it you know so it doesn't get sucked up in there and i'm gonna put a, i'm gonna put some wheels on this bad boy or make it like a little roll around thing for it so I can get it out of here but if I got if I get it to work with the bag all I gotta do is pull it out a little bit it goes in that corner over there I can pull it out a little bit and just pull the bag out and uh, take it out there and dump it and bring the bag back in that's about it for it I can't think of anything else like I said if you're doing any kind of woodworking and you got some if you don't have no room go with this and then you don't do a lot you can go with this just make sure you check your vacuum cleaner every time that damn thing fills up because if you don't it'll fill up and you'll get so used to using this thing and dumping it that you'll forget to check your vacuum cleaner and it will burn up the motor that vacuum cleaner up there was slam full I mean all the way around the filter when I pulled the lid off it was up in the top of the lid and when I pulled the lid off the filter and stuff comes with it there was a little indention inside the center of it where the filter was buried in it. I mean, I was lucky. I could hear it, though. I could tell something's up. I'll tell you how bad it got. The damn cable, the cable that plugs up, got so damn hot at the plug that it burned that outlet right there. Can you believe that shit? I, as you can see, I cut the cable and put another cable on it because it was burned up. That motor got, that it, it got such... It was drawing so much power because it was stressed out so bad, not getting enough air, that it heated up, heated up, and burned my, burned the end of the cable. It was on the verge of either burning up my damn vacuum cleaner or burning down my friggin' shop. So be safe, and y'all have a good one. Don't forget to subscribe, because you know there ain't no sense in me making a bunch of videos if. If nobody's watching, you know, subscribe, follow, hit the notification button, and I got a bunch of shit. I do a bunch. That's why they call me an Alabama dabbler. I dabble in it all, buddy. Motorcycles, food, wood projects, you name it, I do it. Small engine repair, everything. There ain't nothing I can't do, but I ain't a pro at none of them. Like they say, I'm a jack of all trades and a master of none. Y'all have a good one. I'm gone.